If you own adjustable shocks like these, then in this video I'm going to be showing you exactly what each setting does, how it affects your ride, and how you can set up your adjustable shocks to suit you and your application. First things first, what is the benefits of having adjustable shocks over your standard shocks? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be using the Formula 4x4 FRR Remote Res shock. And this shock has three points of adjustment. So it's got your high speed and low speed compression, and it also has rebound adjustment. So these are the adjustment points that you'll typically find on your higher end sort of adjustable shock, like these FRRs. But other shocks might have just compression and then also rebound, and then other shocks themselves might only have compression and rebound at the exact same adjustment point. So you can only adjust those together. So that's your sort of typical adjustable shock uh, range that you'll expect. So let's start with compression and rebound and what they mean. So compression refers to the shaft of the shock moving into the body, and then rebound refers to the shaft of the shock moving out of the body. To break this down further, high speed compression controls the compression of the shock during quick bumps, such as going over potholes or going over corrugations. And for low speed compression, this refers to controlling the compression of the shock during slower movements, like when you're cornering and the body of the car rolls. This is to help improve the stability of the vehicle overall. And for rebound, it directly affects the speed at which the springs can decompress and that the shocks can return back to its typical length. Now it's important to note that with a passive damper or shock, each adjustment is a compromise. So an improvement in one area is detracting from another. So the idea here, when you're adjusting your shock, it's to try and find the best compromise for your application and your needs. It can sometimes be pretty difficult to tell how your suspension is performing and what adjustments you need to actually make, depending on the terrain you're driving on, or maybe the vehicle's loads and setup, or even maybe how the driver wants or needs their vehicle to handle. So if you're experiencing, let's say for example, your car's bottoming out really easily, you need to increase the high speed compression. However, if your car's feeling really lazy and unresponsive, then you need to increase your low speed compression. If the car's too harsh of a bump, if it's small bumps, you need to decrease your low speed compression. But if it's big bumps and it's too harsh, then you need to decrease your high speed compression. If your car kicks off bumps, you need to add more rebound. And if your car feels too floaty, once again, add more rebound. However, if it's really harsh over cracks or potholes on the ground, then you need to actually decrease your rebound. As you can tell, depending on what you're experiencing, it becomes a bit of a balancing act to fine tune the shock, depending on what you're wanting to achieve performance wise and how you want it to feel. Now it's important to note that there is no best at everything shock or shock setting. You just basically have to fine tune the shock to get the best possible compromise for what you're feeling. So to give you a visual of the difference, I have this shock display. And now I'm gonna have all of the adjusters set to the lowest setting. So that way you can see the visual difference between the lowest setting to the highest setting for each of the adjustment points. Let's start with rebound. So I've got the rebound set to the lowest setting. So I'll pull down on this shock, let it rebound, and I'll let you know what I feel. So straight away, I can tell it wasn't really that hard for me to pull down on that. I did obviously have to pull down a little bit because the shock is designed for obviously car weight. In saying that, the shock comes back up pretty quickly. Uh, there's no real issues there. The rebound essentially just functions at its lowest setting. So let's turn the rebound setting all the way up and I'll let you know what I feel comparatively compared to the low setting and then the high setting. So I've now got the shock on the high setting. Let's test it out now and I'll let you know what I feel. We didn't see much change here because of how rebound adjustment worked. The low setting of rebound allows the spring to decompress quickly, whereas the high setting on rebound slows down that spring from decompressing, controlling the spring much better. Let's now move on to high speed compression and we'll see the visual difference there. So low setting, high speed compression test. Let's see what the difference is. To test this, I need to pull down on the shock quickly to simulate hitting a pothole or similar. There's a... Uh... Not a huge struggle for me to sort of pull down on that. Obviously it feels the same firmness because of the rebound, but now let's ramp it up to max high speed compression and we'll see the difference there. So we're now at max high speed compression. Let's test the difference of the shocks now. So straight away, I can tell that it's very hard for me to pull down on the shock like it was before. Um, so high speed compression obviously refers to the speed at which the shaft is trying to compress. 
and then low speed is a slower speed. So if low speed, sure it's slightly firmer because the high speed compression is turned up, but overall it's not so much different than if I had turned the high, low speed compression all the way up. Now, the high speed compression is the small, sort of, well not really small, but like the fast compression movements. And it really doesn't want me to pull down on that shock. So that's gonna help control lots of those firm and harsh bumps uh, that you'll go over, such as like your speed bumps, things like that, and like maybe ruts off road. The low speed, however, will be more of your normal general uh, bounciness or wallowing, I guess, on the road or off road. So let's compare low speed now. Low speed is on the lower setting, and let's test high speed and rebound are both still on their higher setting. I've left it like when I last tested. To test low speed compression, I instead now need to pull down slowly. So that was not too bad, pretty much like what I felt before. So let's ramp it all the way up. So now I'm on max low speed compression. Let's give it a test now. As you can tell, I basically had to lift myself off the ground for that one um, in order to pull that shock down. So the settings really do make a huge difference in how the shock feels and performs. Um, and that's probably the best way I can sort of visually show it to you. You really do need to feel the difference so in a car before you can really tell just how much difference there is from changing a few knobs. So now that we've got all of that covered from the shock stand display and you've seen the visual difference of what happens between adjusting the lowest setting on the rebound, high speed and low speed compression to then the highest setting on the rebound, low speed and high speed compression. What I recommend for you guys when you're adjusting your shocks, start with the shock manufacturer's recommended settings. So it doesn't matter which shock you have that's got adjustments, check the manufacturer's recommended settings, start from there and then work your way around feeling out what your car feels like, adjusting your adjustment points from there and find that best compromise for your vehicle. If your manufacturer of the shocks doesn't have any recommended settings, I highly recommend you start from the middle, so somewhere in the middle of the adjustment points and then work from that point. That way you have a reference to where you've started and then you can sort of explore each side of that, see how it feels each way and sort of know what you're fine tuning and adjusting to get the feel you want. Hopefully this video has helped you understand exactly what adjustable shocks are, what they can do for you and what each adjustment point does. If you want to learn more about these FRR remote race shocks that I've used in demonstration for this video, please feel free to head down to the description and click the link there. Otherwise, if you have any comments about adjusting shocks in general, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Otherwise guys, get out there and go exploring.